Hi, my name is David. I'm a presenter at the California Academy of Sciences, and I'm really excited to have you with me today as we go on a virtual dive in our coral reef. Let's take a look at what's going on in the water. Wow, look at all those beautiful fish swimming around. Today, we're going to be talking all about coral reefs. Coral reefs are really beautiful places, but they're also really important. They help us in many different ways. And today, we're going to learn about how they help us and what we can do to help them. Have you ever heard of coral reefs before? Have you ever heard about places that have coral reefs or been to one? They exist all over the world, but here at the Academy, we have a very special exhibit that's based on a particular place in the world. Let's check out this map of our world, and you might notice a triangle. This is what we call the Coral Triangle. It's a part of our ocean and land that has incredibly diverse coral reefs, reefs that have many different kinds of life on them. It includes the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, and some other countries as well. But here at the Academy, our exhibit is based on the Philippines. It's based on a real dive site that our scientists have been going to for decades to learn all about the life there. And they go there because of that incredible diversity. We call it biodiversity. If you break down those words, bio means life. For example, biology is the study of life. And diversity means differences. So biodiversity means different kinds of life. And this area, this coral triangle, has some of the most diverse reefs in the world, places that have the most different kinds of life. Now, one way for us to think about this diversity, this different, these different kinds of life, is to think about kinds or species of fish. So let's go back to that look in on the tank and look at all those different kinds of fish. Can you guess how many different species we have here at the Academy swimming around? Hmm, what do you think? Well, it's about 90. We have about 90 species of fish in our Philippine coral reef here at the museum. But that pales in comparison to the number that we would find if we could count every fish out there in the Philippines. Out there, there are at least 3,000 species of fish. 3,000. And every time our scientists go, they discover more. So really, it's 3,000 and counting. I mentioned there are 90 species in our exhibit. There's about 1,300 individual fish. So that means that there are more than twice as many species of fish in the Philippines than there are individual fish in that tank at the Academy. Pretty amazing. And that's just fish, right? Fish are just part of that incredible story of diversity out there in the Philippines. There's all sorts of other animals. Can you think of any other animals that you might find at a coral reef besides fish? You might find sea turtles. You might find sharks, which are a kind of fish. You might find sea stars. And you also would definitely find a group of animals that are very important because they build the homes for everybody else. Can you guess or think to yourself what I might be thinking of? If you're thinking of coral, you are correct. Corals are really incredible animals that help build the homes for all of the other fish that live on the coral reef. Let's take a look at a zoomed in picture of what corals look like. This is if you magnify really close in so you could really see close up and you might notice all these tiny little animals there. Corals live in groups or colonies all together and they're related to some other animals you might have heard of. You might have heard of a sea anemone or a jelly before. So corals are kind of like tiny little upside down jellies that have their tentacles up like that 
and they're all living together in that colony. One thing I like to do is I like to pretend to be a coral. You can try it out with me by putting your tentacles up on your head like this, wiggling them around, swaying around in the water, and you're catching little bits of food with those tentacles. Good job. And if you were a coral in the Philippines, you would use your tentacles to catch little bits of food, but you wouldn't have enough food just floating around in the water for you. Warm, clear, tropical water like you'd find in the Philippines, it doesn't have that much stuff floating around in it. So to make sure that they can get enough food, enough energy, these corals have a really incredible relationship with another living thing. If we look at this picture of a coral polyp, do you see all that little green stuff that's inside? That is a kind of algae. Algae, like plants, get energy from the sun, and the corals have it living inside of them. One kind of algae they have is called zooxanthellae. Here's a picture of it there. And like I said, the corals have a relationship with this algae. It's sort of like the coral is renting out space in its body for the algae to live. So the algae now has a place to live, that helps it. And then the algae is paying the coral and the, what it's paying it with is that food, that food energy that it makes from the sun. So these corals that have the algae inside are able to catch food that they eat, but they're also able to get food from the sun. Pretty amazing. Not many living things can do that. Now, the corals at the academy, they have special lights that shine down on them because, of course, we don't have the sun inside the museum. But that, those lights give the algae and the coral that same ability to make that food. And that's just part of the many ways that we take care of the animals in our coral reef. They have the right light. They have the right temperature. They have the right balance of salt and nutrients. It's, it's a big job to take care of them and to maintain all of this. And we have people who, who do this all day and all night monitoring this and making sure that everyone's doing well. And they're able to give them those perfect conditions to thrive here. But unfortunately, right now in our oceans, some of these conditions are changing. I mentioned that one thing that we're able to do at the museum is give them that perfect temperature. Well, right now in our oceans, we're noticing our oceans getting a little bit warmer. Has anyone heard of this before? Yeah, and when it gets a little bit too warm, some of these corals can become stressed and they can release the algae that was inside of them. When they do that, they don't have enough food. They're not getting that food from the sun, right? So they can become weak and sometimes they can even die and they will lose the color that they had before. That's why this change is called coral bleaching. Have you ever heard of that before? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't, that's okay. Let's look at a picture here of a coral that has started to bleach. You'll see that it doesn't have that color up in the top. So that's not good for the coral, of course, because they need that energy to live. But it's important for us to understand why these changes are happening, because it's not just bad for the coral, it's bad for all of the things that depend on the coral. And that includes us as well. You know, the fish need the coral to live, but we really depend on coral as well. If you like to eat food from the ocean, if you like to visit beautiful places in the ocean, and also corals and their reefs protect us from big waves and storms. So these changes that we're seeing, not so great for coral, but there's something that we need to think about too because we depend on those coral reefs. Why are we seeing that warming happen? Why are we noticing our oceans getting a little bit warmer? It has to do with carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Have you heard of this before? Yeah, it's a gas that acts like a blanket. Our atmosphere is like a blanket around our Earth, and carbon dioxide is a big part of what makes that blanket thick and warm. And we need that. We need our planet to be warm for us to live. But when we burn fossil fuels like coal, oil, or gas, we're making that blanket even thicker. And if you, if you imagine yourself 
lying in bed with a blanket, you're feeling pretty comfortable. But if you start piling on more blankets or thicker and thicker blankets, you might start to get a little bit too warm. And that's what we're noticing right now in our oceans. Now, the good news is that because we understand that when we add carbon dioxide to our atmosphere, we're making our atmosphere thicker, we're making that blanket thicker, and we're warming our oceans, because we understand why that's happening, we can also understand how to slow some of those changes down. Anything we can do in our lives to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide we're putting out there, to reduce the amount of gas or coal or oil that we're burning, that's going to help. It's going to help our world in a lot of ways, including helping those coral reefs that are so important for fish and for us. One thing that we can, that we can all do to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that we're putting out there is to try to use less energy at home. We don't always think about our lights or our computers or TVs as being connected to fossil fuels, but they often are. So if we turn off those lights when we're not using them, if we really mind how much those appliances are on if, if they're not being used, if we unplug things or use power strips, that's a great way we can help. And of course, we also can try to support renewable energy, electricity that comes from not burning fossil fuels, but comes from the sun or from the wind. That's something we can do to help as well. Now, it's not just work that we can do in our own lives, it's, which is very important, but there's also work being done in our oceans to help coral. Check out this picture here. This is a picture of some special scientist divers. And they have these weird looking nets with bottles at the end. What are they up to? Well, they are collecting coral eggs and sperm from the water, and then they can bring them back to a state-of-the-art lab that we have here behind the scenes at the museum. They can make baby corals there. And then we can take some of those baby corals and put them on something called a tetrapod. Here's a picture of it now. It's sort of like a 3D triangle made of concrete, and you can grow those baby corals on it, and then put them back out into the ocean. There's also research being done to figure out why some corals are more resistant to some of these changes we're seeing in our ocean than others. And how can we use that information to help put out the most strong, most resistant corals that we can. So if you combine the work that scientists here at the museum and scientists around the world are doing to research and restore corals, if you combine that with all of the ways that we can help them here on land, it gives us a lot of hope for corals here at the museum. You might have heard, you know, bad news about corals and there are a lot of threats to them, but there's also a lot of hope for them. And here at the Academy, we have that hope because we know what we're doing to help them and we know what you can do to help them. And putting that all together, we can really help save those corals. And remember, Saving those corals, it's great for the ocean, it's great for fish. In fact, about one quarter of all ocean life spends part of their time on a coral reef, even though the reefs take up less than 1% of the whole ocean. And it's important for us as well, because coral reefs give us food, scientists study corals to get new medicines to help us, and when there's a big storm or hurricane, they protect us and our coastlines from those waves. I hope you enjoyed joining me today here, taking a little view into our coral reef. And I hope that you will spread this message out to other people that you know. Teach them about corals. Teach them about how we can help them and how important they are to us. And you can always check out our webcam as well. Anytime you want to look at our corals here, go to our website, go to our YouTube page, and you can look at our beautiful fish and coral reef as well. And of course, we hope to see you at the museum sometime soon. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.